Welcome to today's class, everybody. And um, today we are going to talk about socket I/O. And socket I/O is a um, library built on top and web sockets. Now, if you guys notice, right, right from uh, the beginning of our classes when we started using Express, right, to build APIs. We notice that the server can only send a request. The server, right? Our Express server can only send a response when a request is um, sent by the client. So the client could be a, a web, a website, a mobile app, maybe a fridge somewhere, right? That's connected to the internet. It can send a response, a request, right? That device, that client's device can send a request and then get a response from the server. But there are situations where you want the server to send a message to the client, even when the client hasn't sent the request yet. So let's, let's uh, look at those kind of scenarios. When you make payments right online most times that payment is not processed immediately the process the payments might take a little while and then when that payment is being processed you will get a notification in that scenario it will not be practical to send a request and make that request to wait until that request is being processed before you get the response because that process might that processing might take a while. It might take an hour, it might take some few minutes, it can take days, right? Now, before um, WebSocket came out, there's what was called web pooling, right? Web pooling is sending multiple requests to a server to check the states or the status of a particular request. So let's say uh, you, you built a banking app and you want to use web pooling, right? The front end is going to be sending requests um, repeatedly to the back end. Maybe after every one, one um, minute, or after every 30, 30 seconds, you should send a request to check the status of a transaction that is not completed, maybe a transaction that's pending. So maybe within that, uh, let's say if if that transaction like takes like five minutes to process, which means and and let's say a request is sent from let's say the mobile app for example to the back end, it sends every 30, 30 minutes. That's thirty minutes, uh, thirty seconds. Sorry, thirty seconds. One minute. Uh, one minute, thirty seconds. Two minutes. Two minutes, thirty seconds. Three minutes. It will it will take up to like um, 10 requests, right? Before you can get the successful um, uh, status. And that is that is not really pla uh, practical because imagine that there are like 10,000 users using the same mobile app. You expect 10,000 requests to come in if all of them are checking. Let's say out of the 10,000, 1,000 of those users are trying to check the uh, transaction status of a particular transaction, right? And then their mobile app keeps sending a, a request every 30 minutes until the transaction is successful. That would actually slow down the server. It's not practical, right? Because it, it can be implemented, but it is going to have an issue with the server because it's going to slow down the server. Now, the best way or the best uh, approach to implement such a thing is to use WebSockets, right? Or to use Socket IO, which is a, a built on top WebSockets. So Socket IO will just be um, listening for a message, right? It will be listening for a, a, a message from the server. In fact, the client and the server will be listening to each other. So 
anybody can send a message to any or anybody at a particular time, right? If the send, if the client wants to send a message, the clients can send a message and, and not expect a response from the server, right? If that is how you want to implement it, or the server can send a message to the clients and expect it to send anything, right? You can you can also make it that when you send a request to the server, right, you get a response immediately or probably probably not immediately, right? So, socket.io and the web socket technology just comes to make it possible for clients and servers to talk to each other without uh, the need to um, wait until a response is being completed or uh, until a request is being completed. Now, let's uh, see how we can actually implement um, web socket, right? And um, let's see how we can implement yeah, so, uh, sockets.io on Express, right? So we should, now there are two approaches you can use. You can you can decide to spin up a totally separate server for sockets.io and a totally separate server for Express, right? To the uh, servers and those two servers can actually like listen or work with the same database if you want. Or you can write your Express. And your and configure your uh, sockets.io to work with Express. Okay, so let's see. Everything boils down to the documentation for Express. Now, if you go to the documentation of Express, you'll see how everything works. Or uh, documentation of sockets.io, you see how everything works. Now, let's actually move to the documentation. Okay, so um. Go here. If I just say socket.io, we'll get here. Yeah, you see, getting started by the so this is this is the concept, right? Socket.io allows bi directional communication, bi directional and low latency communication on every platform. Now, when we click on get started, what do we see? You see, it's getting started. Welcome. How to install it? How to use? Uh, yeah, we're using Express here to show you an example, right? Now, if you come over to integrating sockets.io, you will see where and where you can integrate it. So this is how to like, integrate sockets.io on Express. See it here. First, we install sockets.io. So then next thing is you go through this set of um, commands, right? Or this set of um, instructions to implement it. So let's see, let me open up my, let me open up my VS code and then we can start implementing. Okay, so, uh, just give me some give me minutes. Let me open my yes code. I'll use the simple things app to do so, right? And I'll I'll implement notifications. So as soon as we finish playing the game, I should emit a notification to you to tell you the amount of or the maybe your high score or something like that. Please assume you are listening to me. Thank you. You say I should what? To zoom the screen. The screen. To zoom my screen. I I see my VS code. No, not now. Okay. I'm seeing the yeah, screen. When I go when I go on VS code, I'll zoom it. So first and foremost, what you're seeing here is the entry point file, right? This is the entry point file for your um for your express. So let me reshare my screen. We are going to follow what we saw there step by step. 
Okay, so we are finally here. What is the first thing we say we should do? We should install npm install software. I also have this to npm install software.io. So while installing that, that has finished installing. The next thing we need to do is. It don't be annoyed. Zoom is smooth. You have not zoomed the some. Okay, is it big enough now? Small egg. Okay. Okay, so first we've installed that. The next thing we need to do is. We need to come and say um, that should be require sockets.io. Then what are we requiring here? The server. So, uh, the server class, right? So then the server class has its uh, implementation. Now, we are not going to, we aren't going to run our server here on app anymore. In fact, this is not supposed to be done here. This is supposed to be done. Now, let me explain something. You see, if you are writing your um, Express from scratch, you're not using Express Generator, then you can do that in your entry point, which is okay, it's like the default way to do it. But if you are going to use Express Generator, then this is not where you spin up that server, right? This is not where you're spinning up the server. So you need to come to where you're spinning up the server, which is which is inside um, www, this being www.js. You come here, this is where you're going to paste your server. Yes. Then you do some yeah. um, changes here. So instead of instead of creating instead of creating an HTTP server, you can create you can create this particular server here. So you can say um, okay. So what do we have here? We have, okay, we've created an e server here. So what you can do is you can say, uh, first IO, which is the IO server is going to be first to me, server. Then the server we are trying to create here is going to be this uh, other one. So it's a server. That's the RVR. Then for our IO, right? We can then say on connect. So we can then start writing our number. Now we need to change these ones too. Okay, sorry. We'll just say IO dot on. So I'm going to explain what I'm doing now on connection. That is what you want to do. Perfect. Then you can see also dot log um a new connection detected. Okay, now, what, what does, let me explain what I've done so far, right? There was already a server, right, that's created, an HTTP server that's created. Now, I'm creating an instance of our um, sockets.io server, right? But that sockets.io server is going to use the HTTP server that is going to create is going to use this particular HTTP server to run. Now, let me let me try to like, let, let me try to explain this. IO itself, 
right? Has its own like component, has its own server, right? But we have our HTTP server alone. Remember, we are not running this um, um socket.io as its own standalone server. It's going to depend on our own the server that was that um uh, ExpressJS already used, right? So what I'm just saying is yes, an instance, the instance of our sockets.io server should be should use our express server, which is what I passed here. Okay, so I our express server will still be the one that is going to be executed, but when this when this um when our uh, express server is being executed, the IO server is also going to be started. Is also going to be created with the same ports for this HTTP server. Does it make sense to you guys? Does it make sense? It's like saying, it's like saying, you have a bank, you have another bank, but the transactions from your the other bank depends on your own bank. So if your own bank is not running, then the other bank's transaction cannot take place. So that's the same thing we are saying. We are saying our express server, right, that we have here, is going to still be the one to run. But the IO server, the instance of this IO server is going to be created with the properties of our express server that was already running. So if this express server is being started, this is going to be created for us. This IO, then we can do whatever I want to do with this IO. So now, what I can do now is I can also export this IO to be used any any other place I want to use it. I could say module dot exports server. Okay, then I could say that's a default export. So I say module dot exports equals to I could say IO also. Now any Web sockets, guys. Any any sockets that I will server that is trying to connect to this um, my express right is going to still use the same ports, but then you know, once a, a connection an I/O connection is detected, there will be this uh there will be this console that log that will be printed out you know, once there's a connection. So let's try to connect. And of course, I could say detected the connection ID is you know, I could say sockets socket dot ID. Okay, so now socket dot ID. So let's so if think about this rule, right? Any device that is connecting to sockets.io, right, is going to be automatically assigned an ID. That ID is just for that session. Now, this ID is important because you want to identify which devices you want to maybe communicate with, with and which, which device you would not want to communicate with, right? Let's say five devices connect, connect at the same time, right? You want to know, have an ID, like maybe a temporary ID for each device that connects. So as soon as the connection is detected, this ID is created for that particular device that is connected. If that device disconnects and connects with you, another ID will be created for that device that is connected via IO, via surface.io. Now, also another difference between surface.io and normal, um, restful APIs is that normal restful APIs when before before a, before a request and a response is uh, uh made right there is a connection that happens so when once maybe you hit that get endpoints or that post endpoints right on your normal express what happens is there is a connection between the clients and the server first then the request is passed through that connection to the server. When the server processes that request and sends back a response, that connection between the client and server is being terminated. So if you want to make another connect, if you want to make another request, when once you hit the endpoints to make to make that request, 
the connection is made again between the client and the server. And then the request is sent from the client to the server, and then the, said, the server sends back the response. Then once that response is sent back, that connection between the client and the server is terminated. That's how this, that's how RESTful APIs work. Now, with socket.ia, right, it doesn't work that way. Socket.ia, what happens is when once a device connects to socket.ia, that connection is kept alive until that device disconnects. So that those those two devices, the client and the server, right? When once they connect, message can be sent bidirectionally. That's a message can be sent either from the client to the server or from the server to the client because that connection is kept alive. Do you understand? Now, one server can save a lot of clients. To know which particular client is being connected to the server through socket.io, that is why we have this ID being created for each connection so that if you have more than one device connecting, you can know which particular device, right? Or which which yeah, which particular device is connecting connected by its ID. Now, there are other questions that would rise up, like how do you know which particular, like what particular device? Like, okay, if my Android phone is connecting and my laptop is connecting, how do I know this? And this this is this connection is for the laptop and this connection is for the the my phone or how do I know the names of people that are connected, right? We would, we would get to that, right? That one has to do with authenticating. So they will, they will, they will provide their authentication token while they are trying to connect and then you can use the authentication token to save their details. That's something you are going to look at. But let's see, let's test what we've done so far. Let's try to connect to socket.io. Let's test what we've done. Uh, let me open Postman. And then it's from Postman that we can test our socket.io connection, right? Then from there, we can see, I'm just waiting for um, Postman to show up. Then once Postman shows up, we, we start like, testing whatever I want to test. So I'm waiting for Postman. Postman is still coming up. Postman is still coming up. Um, just waiting. Now, also, you can decide that you don't want to do this here. You don't want to do this IO here. I can create, I can decide to, instead of, instead of writing this here, right? I can decide to do this. I could say, um, Socket. If socket the JS, then in here I'll put here I'll put what I what I wrote here. Just cut this. Come down here, paste, paste it, paste it. But then I have to import IO. So if I said IO. Yeah, I see that I was coming from www.www. Okay, so Postman has opened. Um, let me go back to my Postman. Okay, wait, before I go back to my Postman, let me start the server here. Let me definitely start that server as well. So let me yeah. start. Yeah. We are connected to database. Now let me share my screen. Let's go back yeah. to Postman. Yeah, let me show you. Okay, so we are here at Postman. I won't open any of this. Don't worry, close your eyes. I won't open any of this. The tasks. But then look at this. If I want to test Postman, I'll first come here and click to add a new collection. But I'll have to choose from it then. Okay, not here. A new blank collection. Okay, then 
Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, sorry, not a new collection. You click new, then it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? Is it a WebSocket connection? Is it HTTP? Is it gRPC? By the way, gRPC is by Google. It's still um, bi-directional communication, right? Still is for bi-directional communication maybe between servers. You see GraphQL, if you've heard of GraphQL, maybe any of you have used GraphQL. There's MQTT. MQTT is built on, MQTT is mainly used, I think with Mosquito, there is, there is a library also, I, I can't remember if it's a library or it's named Mosquito, right? MQ, the way, the way uh, libraries are being named, right? Wow. So these are other technologies, right? We've been dwelling on HTTP, we've not moved to GraphQL or GRPC or WebSocket, I've used both of them, right? But well, let's look at WebSocket. So I want to build, I want to create a WebSocket connection. Now they say, what is the URL? Now this URL, eh, you just have to put localhost, localhost colon 3000, then connect, beautiful. Now look, it's showing connected to localhost. 3000. Now let's come back here. Let's let me reshare my screen. Let's go back to uh, VS Code and see. Okay, so um, so we didn't have the IO dots, we didn't have the IO dots connected, print out. Okay, there might be a reason for that. Okay, let me do this. Since this doesn't work, let me take this back here. Let me take that back here. Let me try to connect again. Okay, so it shows a new connection detected and the connection, the connection ID is that ID. Yeah. Okay, but then why doesn't it work if I take it away from here? So let's say I take it away from here, I take it back to this point. Yeah, let me try to connect. And nothing prints out. Okay, so that's quite weird. But there's a workaround to this, which I'm going to show you guys. There's a workaround to this somehow. So let me still take this back. Let me take this back to these points. Okay. So what I did, let me try to connect on Postman. When I click connect on Postman, See a new connection is detected. The the um, ID is changed. Let me disconnect. Uh, nothing happens. Let me connect again. Now you can listen to these connections or also, right? So if you want to listen to these connections, this is what you would do. You would say um socket dot on. Socket dot on disconnect. Then we can then say console dot log a user as disconnected. Um the connection ID is then I'll say socket.id 
So let me go back to first man. Let me connect. Let me, so I'm clicking on connect now. Shows that the connection is detected. The connection ID is that connection. If I click disconnect, you see that it, the same user has disconnected and the connection ID is or is disconnection disconnection ID. Okay, is and the uh, user ID, right? Let me use user ID, not disconnection ID. So let me connect again. Connected. I think I should show you what I'm doing on this one. So let me show you. I've actually clicked on connect. So now it's connected to to that place. So if I click on disconnect, let's go back to our postman. Our VS code, sorry. See, so the new user has disconnected. Now if I have like two postman, like or three, I can I think I can create more. So let's see. I can call. So let me try and see. Let's see. I'll call this person. I'll call this person user one. Create save. So we have user one here. I can add a new person. A new sockets.io. Uh, local host, local host 3000. I can save that person as. Uh, I think I should just use the same, but I'll change the name. So I, I'll just say, um, um, where is it? Name, I'll say socket users. Then uh, I can say is a one way. Is a one. Then you have to say is a two. Okay, so we have Pizza 1, we have Pizza 2. Now, let me try to connect the two. So, connect Pizza 1. Connect Pizza 2. The two users are connected at the same time. Let's come back here to WebSockets. That's really postman. You see, a new connection detected. The first user. A new connection detected the second user. Beautiful. Now, how do we listen to events, right? On on um, how do we listen to events on um, on sockets.io? Okay, how do we send events from the clients to the server on socket.io first before we look at listening to events? Let's refer to uh, sockets.io. Right. Let's refer to that documentation. So we are here. Now, a meeting event. Let's see how, how it's being done. A meeting event from clients to the server. What does the server need to do? The server needs to listen to that kind of event. So on that kind of event, this is what should happen. Right? Now, in, inside here, like, just take this as like being a route that has its own controller, right? You can say on this chat message, you can save chat message and do whatever I want to do inside that chat message, okay? So let's see, how do we send a request now? So uh, let's say send a message to the server. I can say on, okay, sockets dot on so I'm expecting the client, which is WebSocket, to send the request, which I'll say on clicks. Right? And then I would expect it to send the message that way. Okay, you guys aren't seeing my PS, but sorry about that. So let me take it back to my PS. Then here, look at this. I can say yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this grids, let me explain something. 
When you're first connecting to your server, right? As you're trying to connect, the server is getting that request as a connection, as this as a connection event. Now, anytime, anytime um you you emit, you send a request, right? You're actually emitting an event on sockets.io. On RESTful on RESTful APIs, right? You send requests, but on um on socket.io, right? You emit events when you're there. So anytime I say emit events, think about it as you sending a request either from the client to the server or to the, from the server to the client. That's using socket.io. So when once you try to connect, the event you're sending is a connection event to that server. When you disconnect, you are sending a disconnect event to that server, right? Now, apart from this connection and this connection event, you can create your own custom events that you want that, that server to handle, right? So when you send a connection event, right? As that server is trying to connect you, the server is going to create the necessary details Right for you, your identity that's do with the identity. Right. So look at the sockets the on bridge. Then you can say meeting message. Then I could say um. Now you can say this meeting this whatever you're going to pass here as a message is going to be string. Okay. Whether you are, if so, if you want to pass an object, you have to stringify that object before passing it. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can then say, let me just I'll pass a string. So I'll say console dot log. Um, here is a greeting to you. Then I could say um greeting greeting message. Right, getting message. So now, what I'm doing is, I have created an event listener here. This event listener is going to listen. Is there any any client that is sending an event called greet? If the client, if there is any client sending an event called greet, right, called greet, then whatever is sending as a payload with that event, I'm going to save it as greet message. Right, yeah. and then yeah. I can use that greet message to do anything I want to do. I can save it, I can do anything I want to do with it. Then let's, let's, this. let's go back to postman. Let's, let's go back to postman. Let me try to connect use our one. So I've connected with our one. Uh, let me send an event. So what is the name of the event, right? The event name I want to send is um greet. Remember that that's the event name. We use, we use greet as the event name. Now the message here, the message here can be JSON text or binary, but whether whether it's text or JSON, okay. If it's JSON. The, the um sockets the io is going to have it handle the string file and the uh, passing of that particular server so i could say hello um this is a uh, client one i could do that and send it as a unit. now look at this if i click send you see that that message okay. that event has now been sent yeah. to to the server now let's go back that. and see that in, if that event that we sent from postman has been delivered mm -hmm. to the server beautiful so mm -hmm. here is a greeting to mm -hmm. you then the greeting is hello this is client mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. and if only connect uh, mm -hmm. clients to and send the greeting via clients to so let, so let me do that uh, let me connect clients to so uh, I'll come here. I could connect clients to and say clients two is greeting. Clients two is greeting. So I could send that request. So I see clients two greetings is being sent. 
and uh, let me come back here and show you guys that that is actually being sent. So here's the greeting to you, which is this again. Plans two is greeting. Again. Right. So that's how you send a request or uh, uh, an event from clients to server. Now, how do you send events from server to clients? Let's say, for example, you just connected and I wanted that as soon as you connect, right, I send you an event. What I can simply do is I can simply say um socket got send and i want it that as soon as you connect so i'll say welcome you are connected and this is your id right no this is your id then i can no say socket dot i um, socket dot id sorry okay so I, what I'm doing now is I'm saying when once you're, you're successfully connected, I want to send you a welcome message, right? As soon as so as soon as the client connects, I want to send the client a welcome message that beautiful, you are connected, right? So let's see how how that plays. Let's me um go to VS uh postman. Let me go back to clients. Well, now each time the server refresh. Um, all the connections will be terminated because the server is refreshing. Refreshing the server is like crashing and restart, like restarting the server, basically. So let me let me clear all messages. Even if I don't clear them, right, they will be cleared. So I could say connect. Okay. Add events listeners to receive message connected to localhost. So I didn't add the event. So I could add an event and say. Input connection. Let me listen. Disconnect. Connect. Okay. So let's see. Events. So it's not actually printing what I did. Let me see what I did wrong. Let me see what I did wrong. Uh, do I? Is it? I think it's a mix. So let me see. I want to be sure of something. There is send. There is a mix. Okay. I think it's a mix. I'm supposed to use not send. So. I'll see the difference between both of them. So let me connect. Okay. All events listeners to receive messages. So there's, there's a reason why it's not sending that. We're going to refer to that documentation if I try it one more time and it doesn't send. Okay, so emit is used to emit an event. So look at this. We can do this. We can emit events to the front end. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, okay, we can emit, um, we can emit an event. Maybe I'll say connection response, connection underscore response. A connection response event and the connection response event should be that you are connect welcome you are connected to this so when you emit right when you emit you are actually supposed to pass two arguments which is the connection the um, event name and then the value you want the user to see so this connection response now on our clients, we need to listen to that particular event. So let's come back here. Then I'll come here and I'll 
Listen to connection response, then and click to connect. Now, because I'm listening to connection response, as soon as a, a request is made, a response comes back. Look at it. It says, Welcome, you are connected, and this is your ID. But then the ID doesn't show up. The ID doesn't show up. The ID doesn't show up. Um, let's see. Okay, so the ID is the, uh, the second argument, right? And um, that's because what we do here. So let's see. let's see why that happens. It's returning to argument, and that is because that is because I'm using a comma to separate this. Welcome, we are connected, and this ID. So instead of using a command, it is a plus symbol to concatenate both of them. So it's saying it's expecting a comma. So this is what I do. I can simply use what is called string interpolation and say, I want that subject that I need to be here. So what, what I'm doing is I have the event I want to emit, and I have the value, the argument, which is the first argument I want the clients to receive. Let's come back here and let's see what we've done so far. And I'm going to show you how send works actually. Okay. So let's do this. this welcome, you are connected to, and you are connected, and this is your ID. Right now, what is send used for? Send is used to respond immediately to an event. As soon as an event is being sent, you want to respond as soon as that event is being sent. That's when you're going to use response.send or, or um, um, socket.send. So let's see. Look at look at this. Now, at this point that we have grid coming in, we can then say uh, socket.send. So I can say um, I have received your written or the server. The server has received your written. So now, this is just more like how um um uh how RESTful APIs work. When once the event comes in as grid and then we log it out, the next thing we want to do is we are sending a response back that the server has received your details, right? But if we want to send more and more response, we can send more and more response. It's allowed. If you notice, right? Anytime I'm using, so now this is this is the beauty of sockets.io. Look at all this. There is no place. Let me let me show you guys here. For example, this authentication. There is no place I'm sending to response. All my all my request has one response, right? If I'm sending to response, it might be that the response. The way I structure it is that. For each for each route, right? The controller for that route cannot send two response at the same time. Even if they might be two areas dot send, but they cannot send two response at the same time. Depending on how, so if it calls the first response, it will not definitely it will not call the like other response here. But here, right? Here on uh, sockets dot io, you can send more and more response. Let's see. I've written this, and what I want is that when when the client, which is a postman in this case, emits a great event, I want to I want to console the log what is being sent, and then I want to send back a response, right? Immediately that event comes in. So let's come back here. Let's come back to user one. Let me connect. Then let me send that written request. So I come here. I'll send that bit. Okay. I sent the bit. Hello, this is client one. Um, 
then I'm supposed to receive a message back that says the server has received your greeting. Okay. So there's something I'm not doing right. I acknowledge that. Let us go to their documentation. Okay, so let's see. Um, server delivery. Let's see. Let's see. So on this, we can emit. Okay. When once we get a chat message, we can emit a chat message. Beautiful. Um, so let's see. Emitting events. Okay. Let's see their basic example to be short. Where is it? Emitting events, emitting events, broadcasting. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm seeing emit, 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 emit. I'm not seeing anything about send. So let me see clients do de delivery, preferred events. Okay, so let's see. So on clients delivery, let's see how this sends events. Events. Okay, and what's this? Okay, so let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about that. I think. We are going to be fine. Give you just this circuit dot emit. Um, not sure about this circuit dot send, but let's see. So this method mimics web circuits dot send method. Okay. So you can circuit dot send. This is equivalent to. Okay. So this is equivalent to circuit dot emit then message and then hello. Okay. So. I think that would mean, let's come back to you. Let's come back here. Let's listen to a message event. Let's listen to a message event. Then let me disconnect and let me connect and let me send that grid again. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The server has received your greeting. Okay. So anytime you use message um, socket.send, right? What you're actually emitting is you're emitting a message event. Okay. So if you're not listening to if you're not listening to a message event, right? You are, you're not going to get so this is it. We sent that um we sent that um message or uh, that greet event and when we send the greet event what we got back as a response from the server is that the server has received your greeting and this is possible because we are listening to message events also so anytime you use anytime you use uh socket dot send what you're actually doing is your your is the short form of writing socket dot emit when you're writing message as so Let's let's come back here. Let's see what I actually mean. Socket dot send is exactly the same thing as writing socket socket dot emit, and then you write message, and then your your argument here. Okay, so. These two are basically the same thing. 
So if you write socket.send, the server has received your greeting. This license socket.emit message, and then the server has received your greeting. So I can decide to send email. I could say socket.send, uh, and I want to thank you for greeting me. So let's let's come back here. Let's connect. Let's connect and let's send that message again. That event. Okay, so if we click here. Okay, so if you look, let me let me make this smaller. You see. We sent, this is a lot of things happening at the same time. When we connected, we saw welcome, you are connected to the, and this is your, and this is your, and this is your ID, right? Then when we send the greet events, we see, we send the greet events to, uh, to the server, right? The server replied with two response. It replied with the server has received your greeting, and it now replied with, and I want to thank you for greeting me. Okay? So now you've seen that this already enables bidirectional communication. Another question we want to ask is how do you how do you make it that when you query an endpoint, that endpoint sends uh, a response? Uh, sorry, that socket emits and that uh, that uh, um, that routes emits an event. So let's see how we can actually do something like that. Look at this. Remember that we can add middlewares anywhere. This app is still the same app that we had in our, uh, we had in our, that, this place, right? This app.js. Now, in reality, right? This www is actually an entry point because this is the, this is the first script that is executed. But then this script is still connected to the app.js. So look at this. Let's come back here. Come back here. I want to add no. I want to add a middleware, and I want that middleware to include IO in its. Uh, in our request. So this is what I'm going to do. I can say uh, app.use and I'll say REQIOS next. Look at this. I can say now what I want to do is I want to enable it that if I call IO from an endpoint, right? That it should emit an event right away. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to see req.io should be equals to IO. Then I'll call next. Short and simple. Now, what I've done so far, let me see if this is going to work. Yeah, what I've done so far now is I've said that. Anywhere that I call req.io on this project, that you should understand that I'm talking about IO. Now, I can use this IO to emit events to anybody. For example, let me create let me create a route. Let's say at this, let's say um let me create a dummy route. So I'll just say app.use and app.get. Um, let me, I'll just say emit, emit uh, an event, REQRES next, maybe for next, I'm not going to use it, so, I can then say I O I 
this is an event fired. The and events endpoints. Okay, um, who is the host now? Okay, um, Precious, can you make it the host? Our network kicked me out and I just, uh, and uh, brought me back again. So, okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, let me share my screen a again. So, I said, uh, hello, this event, this is an event fired from that endpoint. Then I could uh, respond. Response the send. So sorry, this is supposed to be req.io.send because we said anytime we are referring to req.io that we've assigned it to IO. So I could say um event emitted. So any any client that is listening to a message event is going to get it. So what do I need to do here? First, so let's go back to Postman. Let's come to Postman. Okay. Then, let me create a request here. I could call this um, test. Let's call that test. Then, where is it? Then I'll add a request. And that should be a get request. So HTTP colon local host 3000 forward slash emit an event. So first, so let me come back here. Let me connect. And of course, you just have these few events connected, whatever. Now, let me make this request to see. Send to emit an event. What is it saying? Could not send requests. Why couldn't it send a request? So, HTTP double forward slash before localhost. So, let me send that request again. Um. So what is it saying? HTTP local house 3000 emit an event sending me an empty object. So this is not supposed to send me an empty object. Let me see. So let's see. I'm having a 500 error in the back end. Okay, let's bring all it together. That's why we are here. 
Okay. So the simplest way to all these lines is to recognize the try and catch. I can say you should try to send this, and if there's an error, if there's an error, it should. Um, Rs the status five hundred dot send. I say internal server error. Then I click console dot log error. So let me send that request again. Yeah, beautiful. So it's what is it saying? Cannot read property of undefined. Send line 39. Is that it? REQ dot IO is what I'm using here. Coming back here, coming back to this post, what am I saying? REQ dot IO. So I think I think this has to do with this has to do with presidents. We are putting okay. So. Let me see how I can actually solve that. Let me see how I can actually solve that. Okay, so let's see. Let me see how I can solve that. Just a few minutes. Let me check why that is the problem. Okay, I actually know the problem. Okay, I know the problem. So let's see, let's see at this point which server is missing. Server that's missing. So let me explain the problem to you guys. Now, if I write, where is it? Let me drag this here. If I remove this, right? Let me remove it from there and I come here to www.js and and I put it here. So let's see. Let me, let me make that a question. Okay, who is going to give an internal server error? Okay, say so not from. Let me change this to server. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use this middle where before getting to the implementation here. That's what I'm trying to do. So let's um let's test it together. This is rq.io.send. Um, I have IO here, IO. Okay, so let me try to send the request again. It's still saying not in the app is not found. So let's, we are going to solve this, right, in the next class, right? Not in this class. Let's see. I'll find out why it's not, um, it's not allowing me to do what I want to do.
So uh, another approach I could use is I could I could actually try to bring this here instead. So I could say I will from here. Then let me see. Let me also copy this out. I will explain what I'm doing if it works fine. If it works out well, I will explain what I'm doing. Okay, I'm not saying internal server error. Saying... Okay, 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 okay. Great. I think it's because there's no instance of the server running. Maybe that's why. So let me send that request to you. Let me see. Okay, so these are the issue, and I'm going to check it out, find out why it isn't sending, right? Because the way I could do is that it just it would start sending immediately, but that would make me be writing a lot of things. Okay, so minus what minus this issue we had with uh uh emitting an event using uh a route is there do you guys have any question any question based on what we've done before now any question mm -hmm. what is the question yeah. nobody has any question Okay, so um, so in the absence of any question, yeah, right? You can call it for me. So you can call it a day. And uh, we'll meet it in the next class, which is going to be by Friday. By Friday, we will solve this issue of not being able to send requests via uh, we are out, right? We we'll solve that issue, and then we can see how we can also integrate authentication, right, to um sockets.io so that we can use that to know maybe who has access to what and if they if they are allowed to send the request, right? Authentication and authorization. Okay. All right. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you in the next class.